Okay, Mark meets Sean Moran, creative director and founder at Soul. Hi, Sean. Hello. Um, this interview, we're going to chat about Soul and new startups and how you guys came about. Um, before we do that, I just want to get your background. Uh, can you quickly give us like a one-minute summary of your career and how you've ended up here? Here. Um, going right back, I started um, was it so much early as like a, let's say the nineties. Um, working at Satchies, then I went from Satchies to GDT Direct, and then from there um, CDP. Um, from there to Partners Andrews Aldridge. Uh, oh no, I went from there to Wonderman's, and then I went and actually joined the startup at Partners Andrews Aldridge. Went from there as Creative Director of Leader. Um, a brief stop at TCA as ECD there before coming here to start my own agency. And I suppose, um, yeah, this is something I've been planning to do for quite some time. So, Soul is four months old. Yes. Um, tell us who your partners are, how you set it up, why you set it up, where you got the name from, all the background. Sure, it's like a, partners are Mike Collis, he was the um, MD originally at Elvis, and uh, the planning partner is um, Ben Rachel, and he was the planning director at uh, CMW. And uh, the agency's called Sol, and actually rather than actually just trying to come up with a novel name, there's actually a very good reason why it's called Sol, and it's actually completely, it's, it's, it's reflected in our approach. Because um, we are essentially a direct marketing agency, but we actually treat direct marketing more as a way of thinking rather than a channel. And I suppose <clears throat> we do believe um, communication should be, uh, what's it, um, it should be, well, it should be, it should be emotional and, and it should influence you as well. And we actually coined the phrase of kind of moving people. And, um, and that's, I think that's a bit more of a... It goes a little bit deeper than saying just say behavioural change. And, and I suppose if you're going to move people, we very much believe that you need to understand people better. So to move people, you need to understand them better. And, uh, <clears throat> and I suppose... Um, I suppose what do I mean by that? Um, I suppose, to, yes, to, to move people you need to understand them better and actually that means we, we always focus on people as, in like a, as our start point and then decide the channel afterwards. So it's very much actually kind of creating communications integrated around people. And I suppose what's interesting about that is that in the past, isn't that probably my most interesting work has actually been where you focus on, on people and an understanding of people, where you dig a little bit deeper. I suppose that's where my most interesting work in the past has been. And this is, this is, I've always been more really interested in this approach. And you don't just end up with more original creative work, you actually end up with work which is invariably more effective. So, although you've said it's more of a direct marketing agency, it sounds like direct marketing is going to be at the heart of every project, but the idea comes first. So, regardless of you're doing a mobile app or a, or a website, that's still fine as an execution, but there will be some, some direct approach. Well, yeah, I, I suppose it's like... Um, and again, I suppose people still actually think as direct as the channel, as an like, idea is the approach. It's actually kind of making a connection with someone and getting a response. And like a, there was always that disconnect about digital and direct. Yeah. Well, actually, digital was always the kind of um, well, the channel um, that direct was crying out for because it's much more responsive. So yeah, I, yeah, it's, it's, it's exactly that. It's actually kind of making that connection, getting that response. What's the plan? What's the plan for the agency? Obviously, there's three of you, uh, plus the helpers and freelancers now and again. Well, yeah. Well, actually, at the moment we are we are about um, seven people on and off um, at the moment, and this is actually very early stages. You know, and obviously we're growing steadily, and obviously um, we've got our founding clients. We've got um, some newer clients that are just bubbling under, which I can't talk about. Are you allowed to tell us who the clients that you have at the moment are? Um, yes, we've got. Uh, we're working with Superdrug, um, and we've been doing some work with Liberty, uh, and actually doing some work with um, Lix, which is a it's um, sexual products, 
which is kind of a, which sounds a bit dodgy, so I'll actually clarify that. It's actually kind of a, it's a condoms, kind of a intimate wipes and um, lubricants. And it's actually kind of, you know, in, if, if anything, it's actually aimed at actually more middle class consenting couples anyway. And, uh, you know, we're actually uh, working quite closely with them. Have you been sent some free samples? Um, yeah, we have some free samples in the office actually, but we're only actually saying yesterday they've gone missing. But it's in, they're not, they're interesting. Well, it's Valentine's <laughs> Day today, so yeah. interesting timing. Yeah, that's actually went missing before though, so it's certain different people <laughs> we've had in, but yeah, but we can get some more. <laughs> um, are you guys going to be looking to enter working awards and start to. Oh, ab- absolutely. Isn't it? like. Um, well, I suppose what what's the um, entry for Cannes at the end of March? So, you know, it gives us a bit of a chance. But is it, yeah, very much. I think um, we are building the business up, but actually, you know, we are a creative agency, and actually, ideas are actually at the heart of everything we do. And so, yeah, of course, as in, like, um, I'd like to think um, we'll be, well, we'll certainly be creating work that is actually worthy of awards this year and next year as well. You've obviously worked for big, established, financially secure agencies throughout your life. They were, really. Well, yeah. maybe. <laughs> uh, or well, the perception was that they yeah. were financially secure. Obviously, jumping from that and all the experience that you have to launch a startup, um, it takes a particular uh, type of person and hunger level to do that. Um, what advice would you say? What advice would you give to, to people thinking of maybe doing the same thing? Doing a startup. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Well, there's probably some very rational kind of advice. It's, like it's best to actually um, set up with some um, existing business because actually you're just kind of setting up in the office and actually kind of looking at the phone waiting to ring it ain't going to happen. So it's actually best to actually um, yeah, start with some clients. And obviously, you know, it is. It's actually kind of, you just got to be incredibly hungry. You know, it's like, um, like you know, the MD is, you know, when you first start off, you know, it's like the... You, yeah, Mike's the MD and he's kind of account handling, you know, I'm, I'm the creative, as in that, but equally I'm the creative director and then I'm actually kind of, you know, part of a team. You know, you're actually kind of doing absolutely everything and you've got to love doing all of that. And um, I think you said before, you've got to be quite thick-skinned as well because you're constantly chasing business and, you know, it's the most important thing in the world for you, but it's probably not the most important thing for them. So you're actually kind of constantly kind of chasing business. And when you, sometimes you don't get an instant response up. But it's in, you know, you've got to keep, keep at it. You've been in businesses before where you've had a new business team that do that for you. So do you feel like you're still learning something new or you're more exposed now in a smaller environment where every day is different and you have to wear different hats? Um, yeah, well, I was just say, saying, like, um, I suppose at that initial stage of chasing business, I suppose I've never been as exposed as I am now to that. But as in like a Mike and Ben... Obviously, I've got much more experience than that, and that's the, uh, you know, Mike's got a very impressive diet, um, black book, and so's Ben, really. So, isn't like, that, you know, it's actually tapping into some of those previous relationships, and, you know, they're very good at, they've got a lot of experience in the business. So, when it comes to choosing partners to set up an agency with, um, had you worked with Mike and Ben before? Um, how did you, how did you know each other? Well, actually, um, way back, I actually uh, worked with Mike Collis at Wonderman's. And I've actually done, um, actually I've done a lot of judging with Ben. And so I suppose what's quite important is in like, um, well obviously the, Ben and Mike don't take this the wrong way. They're not actually, the, you know, they're not friends. Right? These are people I actually respected who have later become friends. And so I think that's very, you know, it's not worth starting a business with your mates because you like them. It actually comes out of respect. So I thought actually these are two people I actually love to do a business with. So it's a kind of mutual respect for the disciplines that you independently work in and have built up a reputation for yourselves and brought that together. Yeah, yeah. And I think, um, yeah, we bring different skills, but we're actually kind of um, quite very compatible. You know, isn't that? we are actually quite, you know, because I suppose, you know, say soul is, it is the um, agency that kind of, yeah, to move people, you need to understand them better and we take a very much people approach. But actually, we're quite approachable people, I'd like to think. And we're actually, you know, there's no egos. We're actually kind of pretty down-to-earth people, really. I think clients, on the whole, quite appreciate that. OK, I think that's a pretty good overview uh, of Soul and his startup. Um, let's move on to a bit more about yourself. OK. Um, what's your favourite ad campaign of all time? Favourite ad campaign of all time? Um, I suppose this, this keeps changing, really. 
because there's like um, as new work comes out, it supersedes the one that you really liked. Um, rather than trying to pick, you know, like um, something that everyone else yeah. would pick, like the Guardian ad from years <laughs> ago or something like that. Actually, what I really like is just I really like uh, just quite different ideas. And I suppose it's like a, rather than pick, picking picking an ad campaign, a TV ad. Um, I just like slightly different thinking. Actually, one thing that springs to mind is um, I actually saw something in the Guardian once, and it was actually um, a building that was being, I think it was going to be demolished or something like that. And um, you know, when they actually start boarding up the windows, and actually those buildings look absolutely awful. But someone had the idea of actually putting a photograph on each boarded up window of the person that lived there and a little bit of history about them. I thought that was just, just a gorgeous kind of uh, way of thinking. And admittedly, when it comes to kind of like um, stuff that's going on in the creative industry, I sometimes kind of start to warm more towards the kind of things that go beyond kind of press or TV and those kind of traditional kind of things. Yeah, I suppose like what I see yesterday is even like, um, is it kind of um, Ice Bar from Brazil where they were doing, um, you know, where, where you actually do your codes. Uh, in a bookshop, you've got travel books, and when you actually go and check the price, and then you actually kind of do it on the barcode, and it actually say, and it actually starts selling uh, BA flights. It actually come up, you know, flight. Why, why rather than uh, when you're buying the book, why not fly to the destination with British Airways? It's, like, it's just kind of just little sweet ideas like that. It's just kind of a different way of thinking. Nice. Um, who inspires you creatively? Um, Again, I'd probably actually pick, um, rather than individual people, because often I, you know, you, you, it, it, it's probably seeing different work that kind of um, inspires me. It inspires me for, you, for being envious, wishing that I'd done it. <laughs> or actually just kind of like, that is a lovely way of thinking. And so actually that inspires me. And actually probably, yeah, maybe if I actually take the effort to actually see who's really done all that work. <laughs> actually, sometimes it is coming from particular agencies, but, you know, it's not... It's, could well be um, could well be a person that I really admire because it's actually kind of like I like those six pieces. Yeah. I um, I interviewed Nicky Bullard yesterday. Oh yeah. Over at Leeds and Mrs Archie, who said the best bit of advice she'd she'd ever been given was, "There's always a better idea. Someone's always got a better idea." Um, how do you get? To Someone's the, always got a better idea. Someone, or you have always. No, there idea. there is always a better idea out there. How do you get to the point where you are happy that you've got an idea which is the right idea for for that project? Um, because you, I guess, as all, creatively, you can keep thinking, I, I might come up with a better idea tomorrow, or I might hire another creative team who might come up with a better idea. But where, how do you decide to draw a line? Yeah, well, I suppose that is tricky, really, because I suppose as a creative, isn't like you're always thinking there is a better idea. And you always think there's a better idea in you rather than actually just generally out there. But I suppose you have to work to a deadline. So I suppose if you actually put as much effort in as possible to come up with the very best idea in the time allowed, I suppose it comes to a point where you know you just keep constantly questioning it, is that the best I can do? Because I suppose, unfortunately, you can't just keep thinking. If you've got to do a campaign for Christmas that ain't worth coming out in January. So you have to kind of you have to give yourself a certain amount of time. Have you ever been in a situation where you feel you felt like you've been selling the best of a bunch of bad ideas to a client, or do you are you always generally you would never go into a uh, a pitch meeting with an idea that you're not happy with? <laughs> um, obviously, I'm going to say <laughs> we're ever going to a pitch. It's the very very best work we can do. Um, have you ever gone into a meeting where I actually don't think it's the best work we can do? Um, it'd probably be better for me to say, no, that has never happened. But I think anyone watching this would actually care. Sometimes you have gone in, in a meeting with work, saying, yeah, this, this is all right. It fulfills the brief, but it could be better. But like I say, it's like sometimes you're actually kind of up against the deadline. And so, yeah, yeah. But equally... Um, I suppose there has been situations when I've gone to a client and I've actually said, as in, this is where we're at, I don't think it's right, I think we need to think a little bit harder and need just give a week a little or bit need more time. And I actually think clients respect that as well because, yeah, it's, um, 
Yeah, they want you to believe in what you're selling yeah. them as well, and if you don't, then you would probably get Yeah, so if anything isn't like him, I would like to think if I was in a situation where I had to go into a meeting and actually present work that I wasn't really proud of, isn't like him, what I'd actually more likely to go in and actually say, um, I think we can do better, give us another week. What do you do outside of work? What are your interests when you're not working? Um, <clears throat> well, I've got a, um, a little two-year-old boy, so he actually kind of takes up most of the time. Um, actually, outside of work, yeah, I actually kind of, oh, well, I suppose I like um, all the, a lot of the things that um, London has to offer, everything from like galleries, films, everything like that. But isn't like, um, I do actually like spending a lot of time with um, friends, family, um, but you kind of live in the countryside, so do you... Well, yeah, I do now. But yeah, well, it's a nice little mix, and I, I, like, I like that kind of um, <laughs> living right out in Claygate, which no one will have ever heard of, but it's near Eastshire. Um, actually, it's a nice mix of actually kind of having that kind of break from London. I think I would probably um, tear my hair out if I just lived out in the country. And equally, I'd probably find it frustrating now if I actually just live right in the centre of London, because, again, it gives me more scope. And sometimes, I, you know, it's like, um, I like almost like the... Um, pretending with the Terry and June life at the weekend and it's not really me but it's, it's quite, I actually quite like it yeah. and actually yeah it's like a, is it, um, or the good life was actually filmed at Surbiton that was there so I'm not far from there but yeah. let's move on to a quick fire round can line or DNA D pencil um, yeah I suppose the can line now was actually just much more variety of the work but yeah Olympic, it, Olympic? I'd, I'd, I'd add it either but yeah uh, Olympic gold medal or an Oscar um, what would I like because I'm not overly fit, I would actually be so very proud of myself if I got an um, Olympic gold medal, even though I might get it for shooting or something like that. Tiddlywinks. <laughs> yeah. The brightest person you've worked with? Um, I'd say the brightest people I've worked with are Mike and Ben. <laughs> Good, Good answer. answer. Safe answer. <laughs> the most creative person you worked with? Um, There's none of creatives here, so you, you, can't, you can't get this one. Well, one day I was like, um, actually, I suppose the most creative people I've worked with, I suppose I've actually worked with um, some pretty well-known kind of creatives, like um, Graham Fink or Sean Doyle and people like that are actually kind of um, really good. But it's like, um, you know, I've actually worked with some really good art directors, like, like Paul Walton or Pat Comer or Carl Napper or... And I hope I've actually mentioned my main art directors there. But you know, and actually, um, and people that's actually, yeah, I'll leave it there. And uh, if I've forgotten anyone, sorry. The best looking person you've worked with? The best looking? Um, it won't be any of those three art directors. <laughs> um, even though Carl Napper would probably like to say yes. Um, the best looking person I've worked with. That's too difficult because if I say if I say it, it looks like suddenly yeah I can't. Stop. <laughs> Creatives or suits? Creatives, obviously. Money or happiness? Um, yeah, it's soft to say you can't have both, really, can you? So um, obviously, I'd go for happiness. Apple or Android? Um, I think they're both important, really. But it's like I've got an Apple in my phone, even though sometimes I feel like throwing it out the window. But yeah, Apple. Degree or no degree? Uh, I don't think a degree is important. Art directors or copywriters? Um, good thinkers. Facebook or Twitter? Um, I don't think you should separate the two, really. I think um, I've done a lot of campaigns that utilise both. Retained work or pitch work? Um, retained or pitched? Um, or you mean project? or? Well... Um, Oh, actually doing it isn't like a, obviously there's always a huge buzz about doing a pitch, and so um, and sometimes you get to do really interesting work that kind of shows the kind of work you can do. Frustratingly, sometimes they don't always actually kind of you win the business, but they don't actually get to do that work. So um, a bit of both. <laughs> Web or mobile? Uh, I think the two have got to come together really. Independent agencies or network agencies? Obviously independent. And then as we start to swell out into an independent network. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Outsource production or on-site production? Uh, well, it's like um, we have a very good relationship with TAG, but they're actually in the same building, so it's kind of a bit of both there. Kind of outsourced on-site? Yes, yes, exactly. Don Draper or Roger Sterling? That's got to be 
Don Draper in it. I love Even though that. actually, I do really like Roger Sterling. He, he's much more the um, more character. Yeah. Yeah, pleasantly evil. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, twist or stick? Uh, I'd always twist. Thank you very much. Thank you.